Hi, it's Jason Gorb from That Shelf. Nice to actually speak with you. How are you? I'm great. Greetings from Toronto. Big change. Let's talk about your introduction to the world of Star Wars. When did you first get any connection with it whatsoever? Or is this reasonably yeah. good for you into the Mandalorian universe? Oh, gosh, no. So my dad introduced me to all the sci-fi that he loved when I was a little kid. And uh, the the original trilogy was were some of my favorite movies, for sure. Um, and so when I was asked to play the voice of Bo-Katan, like, like over a decade now I that was like dream come true I was like calling my dad already for that one um but then you know when this happened it was you know absolutely crazy I, I think I had to pinch myself forever um I was driving home from the meeting after John had offered me the role and I was talking to my husband and I was like I, I, I think they just asked me to do this I'm not sure I was so convinced that I'd like invented it in my head or something I mean I don't want to get, I mean, we get nerdy. You're used to nerdy. We're going to get nerdy. I'm used to nerdy. Trust me, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm used to so, nerdy at my own home. <laughs> so Battlestar Galactica happens because they want to sort of pick up a script that had been lying on the um, ground. Star Wars, because of Star Wars success. And then there's a Han Solo character called Starbuck, who you play eventually. Yeah. You then have the nemesis of Han Solo being Boba Fett. In a funny way, you connect the two central characters and two roles that you play. Does any of that ever sort of sink in or is that just people online going, oh my God, look, it's Katie doing something else? No, I mean, it's sunken with me for sure because Starbuck was the closest I was ever going to get to Han Solo. So I like jumped at that character for sure. Um, and, you know, I mean, when they called when when Dave originally called for me to be a female Mandalorian warrior, I thought like, oh well, that's kind of fun and cool. Um, and the, the, as soon as I saw like the actual animated drawing of Bo for the first time, it, it really felt fitting that to me there were so many similarities between like you know the characters I'd played and and you know the characters that I aspired to play. So it was really cool. There, obviously, since you did it on the animated show first, which is a very different environment, then you're going into live action. Is it as big of a transition as we would assume, or did it really feel like you were just inhabiting a different mask? It's different, right? I mean, like, you know, because both mediums are something that I have worked in for quite a number of years now, but I've never actually crossed over. Um, so I've never actually done that before. And, and it was incredibly different. It was almost a disservice to have played the character as long as I did because I played her, but I never, when I pictured her in my mind, she didn't, she never looked like me. She always looked like the animated bow. So to all of a sudden be playing her, it, it was difficult in the very beginning. It was something that I didn't actually anticipate um, how uh, challenging it was to sort of like override what I actually knew and what I thought I knew of how she moved and how she carried herself and things like that. You've certainly been on sets for, <laughs> many years it's fair to say but there's something unique about the way the Mandalorian shoots particularly with the volume I'm wondering if that absolutely feels groundbreaking or again if it's another sort of uh, permeation of of working with green screens or working with uh, massive sets yeah no it definitely feels groundbreaking I mean it is something so much uh, so far uh, over my head like the first day that I showed up and I actually like stepped onto the volume was absolutely crazy. It was a scene be between Cobb Vanth and Din. And I was watching this scene and just like amazed that I was transported to this place. And we were on the same set or stage where I was filming the next day. It was so weird to me, but it, it provides such a, uh, such a wealth of places that you can go to um, because you're only limited by your imagination. Um, at that point. And so it's really allowed us to make such grand, big series and seasons because, you know, we're in, a, we're in 25 different locations that would be impossible to actually go shoot or very expensive anyway. And final question, where that shelf, which is that place in your house where you put all your stuff, where do you keep your Saturn award? Where do you keep your sort of nerdy stuff that you like to collect? <laughs> So I'm, I'm telling if someone ever breaks into my house, I'm telling you exactly where everything is. But when you walk into my house, there's a bookshelf like right to the right. And I have my Bo-Katan helmet and my Battlestar Galactica helmet right next to each other and all of my awards like right next to them. So it's um it it during COVID, it was my backdrop in my I had the two helmets there and it 
it really distracted people from the very beginning. So I told my husband, I was like, we have to move these helmets. It's becoming a little obnoxious. <laughs> well, well, here's to being a little obnoxious. And thank you so much for your time and enjoy the ride. It's really great. Oh, to thank see you succeed. so much. Oh, I'm so yeah. excited about it. I can't wait for you to see this season. That's us awesome as well. <laughs> Take care. Bye.